All right. Hello, everybody. Um, time to continue with learning some ELISP. And last time we learned a little bit about regular expressions just from the <clears throat> using the Emacs editor point of view. And now we're going to start doing things more programmatically. Um, I, I just uh, want to, to share my new background image here. This is uh, the Salt River. Um, uh, in um, in Arizona, um, uh, around Phoenix, I think, uh, and just a buddy of mine back from middle school and high school lives out there, and he's a uh, he's a photographer just as a little hobby, and takes some beautiful shots. And uh, anyway, just wanted to share that. Um, so today we're going to move into programmatically doing ELISP. So here, this is the regular expression we had before. It's not exactly what we had before, um, but you'll notice I have the grouping and I have a double escape because we're going to put this into a string. And so this escape for the group opening, the opening paren is going to be, hey, don't treat this like a paren as in regular expression to match a paren, have it match <clears throat> a group. And this one is so that the string doesn't process it especially you know, the slash specially um, so anyway a lot of escaping so first we're going to have any lowercase letter one or more that'll be the return type and for our purposes it will always be lowercase um, and nothing special because it'll just be int double car float that type of thing we're not going to do things like um i64 or whatever but if we did have i64 you know now all of a sudden we can handle that um, then we have one or more spaces, so that's going to be the space in here. And then, or rather the close of the group, then the space. Then the next group is going to be the function name, which will be lower or uppercase letters and zero through nines and possibly underscores. Um, and then one or more of those, close the group. And then after that, there'll just be a regular open paren. And then there'll be Right here I have um, the set is going to be A through Z, A through Z, 0 through 9 underscore, commas and spaces. So this is not necessarily quite accurate. Um, but And I think last time I just said any characters within the parentheses. Um, it's not quite accurate because... Um, we could have, you know, you, this would have, like we had something like this, in a... 32, plus, you know, and this is not valid. Um, so if we want it to be more accurate, you'd have to have these constructs separated by the commas, but this is fine for our purposes, um, and that's our regular expression. And we know we can match this and work with this from with Emacs, but we can also match this uh, or, and work with this programmatically in ELIST. But first I want to show a couple of things. The first is regular expressions are really ugly. And um, you know they're 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 known as like um, write once read never because once you create one they're impossible to understand um, and you know you have to break it up and uh, you know like look at it carefully put spaces and new lines in it but you can't leave those in it because those would be part of the regular expression um, and you can't comment regular expressions internally for the same reason. Um, so it turns out that Emacs has a macro called XR. So the macro XR can be you, or not XR, RX. Um, RX can be you, is it XR or RX? Um, RX. And RX can be used to um, basically create a regular expression using a more um, Emacs like syntax, a functional syntax. So for example, you could say any A through Z, and I can run that and notice it translated on the bottom. Now, a um, couple of quick little things here. First, this was uh, pointed out to me on one of the earlier videos. If I give a, an empty numeric prefix, which we covered in the other video, so control U, and then control X, control E, it inserts the result into the buffer. Um, I did not know that. Thank you for the couple of people who told me that. But um, just for video purposes, this will make it a little easier. The other thing is um, the Rx library, I didn't mention in the last video, and someone commented um, that it really should have been mentioned. And I could be, you know, all pedagogical and say that, well, you know, I really didn't feel it was appropriate to mention it then because that was when you were using um, 
it as an editor, you're not going to use it unless you're doing things programmatically. Um, but the truth is, I didn't know about it. I didn't know RX existed, um, which is, well, I probably would have saved it for this video anyway. Um, but, uh, but I did not know about it, so thank you for, for letting me know about that. Um, and you could do things like, you could say, let's make a group. Turn off CUNY mode. One of these days I'll, I'll dive into that. And so I can say one, I can say one or more um, of these. And... And notice that that's now going to put the plus at the end of it. Um, or rather, it's uh, one or more. Oh, yeah, because I left the other one there. Okay, I think. Um, and we could even say this is going to, let's group one or more of these, uh, one or more of any of A through Z. Um, and um, let's just say we need to have a zap and we can say one or more I don't know if that's to be in quotes or not I think it does so it's um, of a digit let's see I don't know um, I don't really know this okay so then uh, let's put the sim control u cxc and so it converts it and notice that it uses it converts digit into colon digit, which is, I guess, an Emacs shorthand for um, the zero through nine. Uh, now, so th this can really give you, um, you know, something that's much more readable in Elisp, and um, it's similar. If you, um, I use Closure, and if you use Closure, it's similar to like Hiccup for HTML um, or some of the uh, SQL language uh, tools for Closure. Um, but I, I don't know if I would use this personally. Like, I get it that it lays things out much more nicely. But the problem with regex is if you're if you're like me and you use a lot of different tools and a lot of different languages, um, you're gonna end up like like you can only use this here in Emacs. And um, you know, and the truth is, after a while, one or more any A Z, you know, you, you just know it's A through Z plus. You know, and it's not a big deal. Um, so I don't know if I would use this or not. I might, I might not. Um, but it's good to know. You know, it's good to know, and it's a cool little thing. The other thing that um, that was then pointed out is in addition to the Rx, there's also an XR library. And in the XR library, you give it a regular expression. And this one you have to install. So if I run this, you'll notice at the bottom, um, it gives this to me what it's doing is it's converting a regular expression into that XR format. Um, and RX has this version, it comes with RXPP for pretty print. And if we run this, you'll see that our regular expression, if you wanted to use this XR notation, if you're, you know, if you're familiar with the list, but you're not familiar or super familiar with regular expressions, you can see that either using XR to convert it, then your code might be more readable in the long term. Or if you're more comfortable writing it this way, it's okay, I want um, the group with the one or more of the A through Z, zero through nine, then one or more space. That's my first brother. Uh, this is my group, which is the function name, and this is the spaces. Then this is the group, which is not the function name, the return type, sorry. Then this is the group, with the function name, so it's going to be one or more of any of those things. Then the open parentheses, and then the final group is going to be all of those characters. So, so both of these are really cool, and I think because I was using regular expressions like in Perl and Python and all these other languages, I'll probably keep to writing them this way, but I could certainly see myself using this XR library to convert it into this if I'm going to make code that I really need to have long-term maintainable. So anyway, um, that's a couple of things that were pointed out to me. I really appreciate the feedback. Um, so let's start talking about things programmatically. Um, so let's first 
Let's make a variable for our regular expression. And just, just put it in a string for convenience. And let's also make um, a regular expression for our line. which we're going to operate on. So, so just, just to have them. So the key thing that we have um, in Emacs programmatically, because we're going to ultimately want to write a, um, a function that does all of this, but I think for today's video, we're just going to focus on the functionality, you know, just the, the base tools of the regex language and maybe a couple other things in ELIS, and we'll put it all together in, in the next video. Um, so what we can do is we can do a, what do we want to do? Let me look at my notes. What do I want to talk about next? Um, yes. I can do string match the regex on the line. And let's look up the help here. Control H F for this function. And it's a built-in function. It returns an index of the start of the first match for the regular expression. Um, so that would be like, let's say we do this. Let's do another one. Let's say we say string match, um, and our regular expression is AAA, and our line is AA stuff ABC stuff AAA stuff. Notice that the AAA starts at the 14th location. So if we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, so it's finding that location. But what it will also do, if we read down this, um, and notice this inhibit modify thing, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, you can use the function match string to extract substrings matched by parentheses, so the groupings, and that's the key of what we're going to do. But also notice that we can give it the extra argument, inhibit modify. We're not going to worry about that right now. Um, but what this tells me is that using this, if you don't use inhibit modify, um, and the default is not to inhibit modify, is in processing string match and possibly processing um, the match string to find those matches, it's going to manipulate that string. It's going to possibly muck it up and change things in it. Um, and that could be a problem. So like, you know, once, so basically, once you call string match, your string might be mutilated. So you want to be aware of that. Um, so anyway, we're going to run this on our line. And then what we can do is we can do match string one on the line. And notice we give it the line. So it's kind of using your know, global state here. It's like it's storing this stuff somewhere. And actually, let's, let me just run this first. And notice that, um, that was weird, match string. Let's run this again. Oh, there we go. And in. so let me let me run it again. And it gives us in our first match. And then we can also do match string two online. And we may have to run this again because stuff is going on. And so again, notice that it's mutilating our data. So and actually let's before we go to the third one, let's bring up the help for this. And notice it'll say somewhere in here, um, return the string by the previous search or reg expression, reg X operation. Um, num specifies which one, so one and two. So I got int and then add two. Um, zero means match the whole match. It says somewhere here, um, String should be given if the last search was by string match on string. If string is nil, uh, the current buffer should be the same buffer in which it is performed. Notice it also says somewhere, oh yeah, you should call the function close to the function that did the search. So this doesn't sound really, um, this sounds kind of dangerous. Um, and that might have to do with the fact that when I ran this, like let me just run this again. And now it's giving me nil, because I guess this wasn't close enough. And if I run, match string three online this will all be okay when we do this in our program 
Notice it's giving me the nil, but if I run this search again, and then I do control U, control X, E, it's matching what we want to match. So um, I'm not worried about this, because when we do this in our program, we're going to do it bang, 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 and it's going to be one after the other after the other, and it'll all work fine. Um, but notice that you know, this is kind of um, a weak part about um, non-functional programming, where you muck around with state and things, things get wonky, things get a little bit weird. But anyway, this is how we can programmatically um, how we can programmatically deal with these um, uh, basically deal with these regular expressions. So I want to show one other thing. Let's let's do this. Let's make a variable here, and that'll be it for today. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll put this all together. Let's put this into a variable for now, and let's call this the return value. Let's see if we can get all of these. Let's see if we do them one after the other, and this will be the function name. So let's run this, let's run this, let's run this, let's run this. And notice that it all it all worked out. Notice on the bottom. So if we evaluate retval, um, it is indeed int. If we evaluate function name, it is indeed add to, and if we evaluate parameters, it is indeed int a and int b. And um, and notice, so I just I just went run run run. I didn't do anything in between, so um, I guess that was pretty safe. And maybe I should probably, well, actually, I don't even know if I do the inhibit modify, that might protect line. Like, let's actually run, evaluate line again, and that's still our line, but it may not protect the matches. Um, so anyway, uh, that's just kind of weird and wonky, but what I want to show from this is ultimately when we put this all together, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to build a function header, and we're going to want to do that in a string. And um, the way Elis lets you do this, is, or one of the ways, is there's a function called format. So let's look at the help for format. And um, if you're familiar with like C, language like C, it's it's very similar to printf. You basically give it a excuse me a string, and the string has substitutions in it, and then you can put variables in for the substitution. So for example, my string can be the name, and then that's going to be I'll leave a space for a percent s a string then is the return and that'll be a percent s and then i'll say the params and that'll be another string and i'll give to this the ret val the funk name and the params and what this should do is if i do control let me, um, control u control x e notice that and i just went to the next line afterwards Notice it ran that, and it substituted in ret val for the first one. Um, actually, I should have done it in the other order because I wanted the. Um, I actually wanted the funk name first, so that was my fault. And excuse me. And so now the name was add to. The return is int, and the params are a and b, or int a and int b. And we're going to have to do a little bit more work on this to, you know, to get this formatted right. But those are all of the tools that we're going to need um, to actually write our function. We basically can make a function that takes, and and if you want to, you might, you know, particularly if you're a, you know, if you're a um, Elisp neophyte, you know, if you're relatively inexperienced, you know, if you're um, if you're experienced and you're just looking at this to pick up one or two things or just for the hell of it, maybe not such a good exercise, but this might be a little fun exercise to think about. Um, okay, I want to write a function now um, that's going to somehow figure all this out and then print out or put into my text um, a function header like we described in the last video. All right, so that's it for this time. I'm going to push this code up even though it's not, you know, it'll be replaced um, with the actual function code after the next video. But this is just around 20 minutes, which is enough. Um, and what we're going to do next time around is put this all into a function. All right, enjoy.